Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements project, we're going to take a studio portrait and convert it into a look kind of like a pencil sketch look. Now it's pretty straightforward and easy to do, but you have to know the exact right steps to make this work. Let's just take a look at that. So here we go. Here's our portrait. I'm going to leave this fairly small in the screen here so you can see the whole picture as I'm working on this. There we go. Now the first thing you want to do is of course to protect your basic layer. So I'm going to make a copy of this. Just drag your background to the new layer button. There we go. Make a copy. Hide the background layer. So that's a protection, we can always come back to that if we mess things up. So there are two basic steps on doing this. We'll be working with two layers. This is our first layer and the first thing you want to do is you want to remove all of the color. So we're going for a, a black and white sketch. There shouldn't be any color in here. So let's go up to Enhance, Convert to Black and White. And there are lots and lots of options in here to choose what you want to do, you know, lots of different kind of weird effects, landscapes, so forth. I'm just leaving it at the default portraits. We just want to remove the color out of the picture and leave the black and white stuff. Choose OK. There we go. Black and white picture. Easy enough. OK, now let's make a copy of this layer. Pull it up there, make a copy. So now I have two copies of our black and white layer. We're now going to blend this layer into this layer. This may seem a little weird, but you'll see what happens in just a second. It's kind of a, kind of a magic trick almost. It's really fun to watch this. So on our top layer, the top black and white layer, let's change the blending mode to color dodge. There we go. Notice how we're, we're seeing all of the darks in here. We're not seeing the lights. They've kind of disappeared. But this isn't it yet. This is not where you want to go. It's a neat effect. You may like that for other stuff, but it's not what we're aiming at. It's just part way there. We now want to invert this layer, make a negative out of this layer. Let's go up to the filter menu and adjustments and choose invert right there. There we go. It makes a negative. When you do that, we still have all of the detail in here, all the shape, all of that stuff, all the information is still here. It's just hidden because we have a negative blending with a positive giving us a white image. Now to bring that back, here's where the magic happens. All we have to do is blur this negative image a little bit. And then we have our pencil sketch. It's really kind of fun to watch this. So staying on your negative layer, go up to the filter menu, come down to blur and choose Gaussian blur. There we are. There's our Gaussian blur. The amount of blur is going to change the effect. You know, a lot of blur and it begins looking more like an actual black and white photograph. Less blur, it looks more and more like a drawing up in here somewhere. It's kind of like a painting almost. Bring the blur levels down and you get more and more to a line drawing effect. So it's simply a matter of choosing how much shading you want to have in your image to retain that line drawing quality and I think right around in here someplace looks pretty good. Again, this is just a visual choice but kind of like that. If I was actually drawing this in pencil I'd probably take it up here someplace if I was really doing it in pencil but this looks more like a photograph I, that's what I'd be you know aiming at but if you want that real pencil look you want a little less shading. You want a little bit of shading but not much. There we go. So that's just about there. We're not quite finished yet though. There's still some more steps we can do to improve on this. Choose OK. But there's the basics. So 
black and white, second black and white, color dodge that one, invert that to a negative gives you white, and then give it a Gaussian blur, and that brings out your pencil sketch look. Let's now see how we can improve on this and make it even a better image. We'll do that by bringing in an adjustment layer on this and adjusting our values. Notice our, our dark values have kind of gone a little bit washy in there. We can give it some more punch by adding in an adjustment layer. So go up here to Layers, New Adjustment Layer, and Levels right there. That will allow us to control our black and white. So this is a new layer, Levels, Choose OK. They're kind of just off screen. Let me pull back on the screen again. Here we go. So here is the, the values in our picture. There's a lot of white, and that's what's over there. Our, our white is set at the white. It quickly drops off into our gray tones. Here's our mid-tone gray. There's not much past the mid-tone gray. There's the actual black point. So to bring your blacks up, move your black point in towards the grays. Basically, you're making your grays darker. So I'll move that black point up. And notice as I do that, you can see it right there. The darks get darker. Give that more punch. Notice also as I do that, the gray is moving towards the right. If you want to bring back some of that lightness, just pull your gray back to the left a little bit. Keep your gray back in the mid-tones. So I keep the grays in the mid-tone area, which is in here somewhere. And then bring up your blacks right there. There is without and there it is with. You can see as I've done that, there is no, without and there it is with. I've just brought up the contrast in there, those blacks and made the blacks really pop. Okay, that looks good. We can close that. There's that adjustment layer. So looking really good. The last thing you may want to do is to put in some texture on this to make it look more like it's an actual, you know, actual drawing image. You want to have some texture on the picture. We're working that on our background layer down here. Again, filter and artistic. And we can come in here and we can do some fun stuff with this or we can come down, you know, this is all kinds of strange effects in here. Let me just do a paint up effect. This is our, our filter gallery. There we go. Now notice that I'm working on, on the background layer on our black and white layer. So you can't really see this effect until I actually try it over there. But we have all kinds of things in here that will give us different effects on the image. Some of these give us kind of a textured effect. So for artistic, we have our brush strokes. Again, these will give you differing effects on your brush strokes. What I'm looking for, though, is all the way down here at texture. Let's go to our texturizer or grain, either one. I kind of like texturizer. We have a canvas texture, brick, burlap, canvas, or standstone. Canvas is kind of nice. Burlap doesn't work too poorly either. You can see here there's a, there's a texture in the background now. On this, I can scale the texture larger and bring a more or less release. So you can bring in just the right amount of texture in here to look as if this has been drawn onto a bit of textured paper. And you can adjust your light angle. I kind of like top left. I can then see the grid pattern of that. It looks more like, like a nice pencil sketch paper. It's a little heavy on the texture in here. But a little heavier is a little better than, than too light. If you don't see it, it's not already worth having it. But there you go. So we've added some texture in here. Again, using the filter gallery. Choose OK. And there is that texture happening on there. Now the amount of texture is based upon that filter. So if it's too much, you want to go back and back off on that a little bit. Let's just undo the texturizer. We'll go back. We'll go back to the texture this time. And make sure we're on the right layer. There we go. Okay, filter, texture, texturizer brings back this up again. And again, we're at the same level here. So I'll put that top left. I'm just going to bring the relief down a bit further, down about two. We'll see how that looks. Choose OK. 
a little better. So we have a little bit of a texture going on now with our paper. We have a nice black and white sketched appearance. So there it is, you know, a nice fast way to do this kind of a sketch. Now if you don't like the, the texture, you can try something else. Let me just show you one last little trick here. I'll undo the texturizer. Let me make a copy of this background layer. There we go. So this one has no texture. Maybe I'll, I'll call this one texture. There we go. Just so you can see how you can compare the two easily. So there's our texture layer. Let's reapply the texturizer. The last filter you use will always be the top here of the filter menu. So that has texture and that doesn't. So I can now hide or show this. And I can see the effect of that texture. See if I actually like that texture or not. It does seem to give it a little bit more of the effect of it actually being drawn on that paper. Now because I have this as two layers now, I can control the amount of texture a little more by controlling the opacity of this layer. I can actually back off on the opacity a little bit and tone down the amount of that texture because I'm, I'm then showing my clean background through the texture layer. So you have a little bit of control here on the amount of texture showing. But there we go. That is how to come in and create a pencil sketch. Again, it's, it's a few tricky steps in there. Let me just walk you through those again. Let me just hide that one texture layer. So steps. Take your background, duplicate it, convert to black and white. Make a copy of your black and white, leaving you a layer up here that's copied. Give that layer a color dodge blending mode, and then invert that and that's filter adjustments invert and that gives you a negative so you have a negative with color dodge that's your basic pencil sketch right there then to bring out your blacks use an adjustment layer levels and pull your blacks up and again that's layer adjustment layer levels right there bring that back up if you double click on the icon it brings the icon back up again so you take your black pull it up towards the middle someplace and then pull your grays back down towards your middles and that adjusts those values. So there it is. That's how to take a portrait, make a pencil sketch. Now the darker skin tone on the person, the more you're going to see the edges in here. White is nice for the background so you have a nice clean background like that. There it is. There is the pencil sketch look. Okay, I don't really have any questions to answer about this. Look, just a couple of things. First off, if you are finding that you're not seeing the negative effect, you're not seeing that white effect that we had, you might be having a problem where you're showing the color version down here and not your black and white. So if you're getting this kind of a strange thing like that, then you're blending your negative into your color background and not into your black and white background. So make sure that you're working on your color background, or rather your black and white background. So it's black and white negative, black and white positive, slight Gaussian blur, and that's what gives you that pencil sketch effect in there. You can, as we've seen, you know, adjust the amount of the effect by adjusting your blur. Now you don't have to use the Gaussian blur on this, it's just the easiest one for this effect. You can get different qualities of effects by using the different blur filters. You may play around with these and just see what you get. Some of them are really kind of interesting, interesting effects on those. You can play around with that and see different variations on doing this. One last little kind of fun thing about this. We actually can block out part of this image here and show through part of our color image. Let me show you how to do that. Go onto your black and white image, make sure your color image is, is showing. There's no red cross through the eyeball there. So on your black and white image, let's go up here to this button. This will give us a layer mask. This allows us to show or hide parts of our picture. White is going to show, right now it's showing everything, black hides. Now by knowing that, we can paint black onto this side. Notice how my outline is around this, kind of blue outline. Make sure that the blue outline is around that so that you're on the mask and not on the actual picture. 
Okay, let's go over here to our paintbrush and make sure we're on a nice brush size. That's a bit large. I'm going to bring the brush size down a bit. That's pretty good. Soft brush in here. And you should have your colors set to black. Can't quite see them. They're just off screen down there, unfortunately. So we can't really see our black colors. Make sure you're on, on your black color. And then you can paint on this mask with black. And what that does is it paints a hole in the mask. And through that hole, we're looking at the color image in behind, which is that one. So I'm not actually painting in red right now. What I'm doing is I am showing the color image through the black white image. Now it, it's really high contrast because of course it's being handled by that blending mode up here, the color dodge blending mode is giving that kind of strange effect. So the color coming through is a strange kind of a drawn effect like that. But there you go. That's how you can take this one step further and actually add some color back into your image by using a little blending right here, a little mask on top of or next to your image, actually masking out just pieces of this to show through the background image. Okay, so there it is. That is how to work with and how to create a pencil sketch. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.